Welcome to Tzu Chi This Week. I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. Inmates in Tainan Second Prison apologize for their past and show filial piety to their parents through the Buddha Day ceremony. Taichung Tzu Hospital effectively performed cock care implants to assist newborn babies with hearing impairments. A young man from a single parent family received scholarship from Tzu to help ease his financial burden. Begin the program with a Buddha Day ceremony at Sanchong District Ground, with more than a thousand people participated. The 82-year-old Siji volunteer Cao Xuexia felt blessed to have her son accompany her to the ceremony. In Tainan Second Prison, prisoners cleansed their past during the Buddha Day ceremony event, and volunteers encouraged them to show filial piety when they will be released. Setting up the Buddha ceremony stage in Tainan Second Prison, this is the first time these more than a hundred prisoners experienced the Buddha Day ceremony. They can all face some of their problems in the past and show regrets about it, and they've also repaired their relationship with families. The Buddha's birthday is also Tsuji Day as well as Mother's Day. They all think about their mother on this day. I felt sorry to my mother because I've been in the prison again and again. No one understands this feeling better than Tsuji volunteer Zhong Zhong. What he did wrong in the past, he has changed it all. Now he's doing very well, and I'm very pleased about it. Zhang Zhongyuan is eager to make up for his parents because in the past he has been in and out of the prison for many times and broke his parents' hearts. We walked in the front and they are following behind. If these inmates want to change themselves, they won't feel like there are no role models to follow. He brings his father to the prison and performs the tea ceremony to thank him. They are showing these inmates that there are still chances to be filial. At the Buddha Day ceremony at the Tsuji Ground in Sanchong, New Taipei City, senior Tsuji volunteer Chao Xuexia, who is 82 year old, is very happy that this time her son is able to accompany her. He is also a Tsuchen, so he comes to the Buddha Day ceremony with me. Because my mom likes to participate in Tsuji's activities. Whatever his mother likes to do, the son Zhen Xi is happy to accompany her. He participates in Tsuji events and recites the Buddhist Sutra every day. Cao Xuexia cherishes her son's filial piety very much. Taking a walk, having good talks, and doing exercises together, these are the happiest moments between mother and son and the most beautiful scenes in life. In Malaysia, the annual Buddha Day ceremony is something that is very dear to all the participants. This annual grand production has 12 years of history, from the mini size event to one of the biggest in the world now. Volunteers from Tsuji Malaysia chapter work together year round to create the stunning masterpieces. Malaysia's Buddha Day ceremony started out very traditional and now is modernized by creative patterns. In 2008, the Buddha Day ceremony moved outdoors to the Bukijali Stadium for the very first time. The biggest challenge was the fact that we had no idea what an outdoor Buddha Day ceremony entailed. We did a lot of research and trail and errors before the final products came out. There was a new challenge in 2010, where the outdoor gymnasium had a game the previous day. The volunteers weren't allowed in to start preparation until late in the evening. 
When the football game finally ended, we all thought that immediately we could start setting everything up, but we realized that the whole stadium was littered in trash. We had to clean every seat and pick up all the garbage. In May 2012, there was no forgetting about the downpour that covered the whole football stadium on ceremony day. What a good learning experience. Every single one of the volunteers woke up super early to help clear all the rainwater that was flooding the stadium grounds. All the volunteers put away their worries and focused on problem solving. They temporarily rented a water pump and manually carried each bucket of muddy water out of the field. In order for the ceremony to go on smoothly, all the details needed to be followed, such as the attracting stickers, decorations for the tables, and sound systems. Organization is key. There were a total of 32 people per group to set up the markers, which is a faster, more organized process than before. We used to take two days, but now we can do it between two to four hours' time. Using a carefully thought out mathematical equation and a beautifully mapped out pattern, what's on paper becomes reality. There's room for zero errors. It's very convenient to use the mathematical equation to calculate the patterns and movement. This way we can quickly place the volunteers into their specific assigned spots. Everything comes together nicely. We all work as one unit, moving with the sutra chant. With the bamboo coin bank pattern, it became an interactive graphic design. We wanted to challenge ourselves. This was all done spontaneously with some clothes that we found on site. For the Tsuji volunteers, the year 2014 was a giant turning point, where they came together with the official opening of the Kuala Lumpur's Jingsi Hall. This was where they had a sense of their own home for conducting Buddha Day ceremonies. I finally realized that we shouldn't dwell on the size of the venue, but be grateful that we have our own space to call home. We should always adapt events to the spaces that we are given. This is a good way to keep track of Tsuji history. The Buddha Day ceremony has evolved in many ways. Patterns, number of participants, and overcoming challenges. The creativity keeps on evolving without forgetting the deeper meaning behind the Buddha Day ceremony. The event first took place in Malaysia in 2006, and it has been going strong for the past 12 years. In our next report, we look at the Buddhist pilgrimages that oversees Tsuji volunteers how to celebrate Tsuji's 52nd anniversary. But first, we join with the volunteers in Tsuji or Magrela village in the Philippines, where the participants chanted the Buddha piously to show their Dharma spirit. In Tsuji or Magrela village, more than a hundred villagers participated in the Buddhist pilgrimage for the first time. A woman even held her sleeping child to attend the event. In addition, they used flowers, bananas, and special rice as offerings to the Buddha, celebrating the 52nd anniversary of Tsuji. <laughs> Meanwhile, the participants in Singapore were connecting with Hualien Taiwan to attend the Dharma assembly where they rekindled their initial aspiration to walk the Bodhisattva path. In Tsuji, we have met many kind-hearted people who lead us to walk the Bodhisattva path. We support and encourage each other, which helps strengthen our Dharma spirit. In Johor Bahru, Malaysia, the kitchen volunteers were making 2,000 peach shaped buns to be given to people who came to participate in the Buddhist pilgrimage. It's great since everyone works together. It's not a problem in regard to how many we have made. It's tiring work, but I feel very happy. Prior to the pilgrimage, the volunteers cleaned the ground and put up the marks. On the day of the event, 480 volunteers walked at the same path, listened to the Buddhist chants, and then bowed down piously to worship the Buddha. At that time, I was sweating all over my body. I thought it's like the time when we encounter great difficulties in life. We must continue to walk to the finish line. By attending the Buddhist pilgrimage, I repented my past wrongdoings. Feeling the joy on this special day is the best blessing that everyone gave to Tsuji. Each year, about three out of a thousand newborn babies in Taiwan requires cochlear implants to assist their hearing. Beginning in July last year, the procedure was included under the National Health Insurance Program. 
Suji hospitals have been performing the implants for more than a decade now. In fact, in Taichung Suji Hospital, over 100 cases have been completed with 100% effectiveness over the past eight years. <laughs> He couldn't speak before. When he couldn't hear, he wouldn't leave my side. When this child was three years old, he had cochlear implants in both ears. Now he can hear and interact with other people. Oh, that's great. He can even detect slight sounds. We think the surgery has been successful. He had nasal laryngeal cancer and couldn't hear any sounds after electrotherapy. The causes of hearing loss can be quite different, as this medical team attentively cares for each case. We thank the director of this department for his careful attention to patients. All of these individuals had cochlear implant surgery at Taichung Ziji Hospital. There are more than 100 cases with a success rate being 100 percent. Many of these individuals are part of a social club and meet each year where they engage with their former doctors. This helps us break through the gulf between doctor and patient and help us grow up with this group of patients. In the eyes of these patients, these doctors are like lifesavers. This group of doctors are actually four generations of physicians who have their own expertise. These young doctors are shy about taking photos of these elder doctors who taught them. To become a doctor, they must serve as residents and are frequently corrected. When it comes to medicine, we don't have a large margin for error. And once a mistake is made, it is sometimes irreversible. Though they are frequently corrected, they are still willing to do this work. There is a feeling of security here because we are learning the best skill from these doctors. He has a theory that if you pass down your skills, the next generation will only be 80% as good, and the third generation will only be half as good as the first generation. This means that we need to teach every student well and actively cultivate them to do better. Regarding special cases, this department has a special interdepartmental meeting every three months. Now each year we have about 40 to 50 different cases. Back when we were young, many of our patients were classified as being developmentally challenged for many years, and then we would learn that they simply had hearing impairments. The ENT department, along with rehabilitation and pediatrics, as well as social service group, gets together to discuss how to help these patients. Many of these patients have high expectations about cochlear implant surgery. During this afternoon break time, when they are not treating patients, all the medical staff are meeting together to find the best approach to treating patients and finding the best comprehensive treatment for their hearing impairment. Today's International Nurses Day, we're introducing you to a nurse in Hualien Ciji Hospital, Yu Li Jin, who has been a nurse for 24 years and has joined the Ciji family for 18 years. She has helped to organize the hospital's organ bank as well as handling many situations in the operating room. Taking out the bone from the fridge, Yu Li Qing helped Hualien Ciji Hospital build the organ bank eight years ago, and now she has to set up files for the donated bone every day. Every step has to be done carefully. These are from everyone's great love. The bones we have from our silence mentors can be used for bone fracture or spine surgeries. Other than confirming the patient's info, she also needs to pass the equipment to the doctors in the operating room. On top of that, she has to handle all kinds of emergency situations so the surgery can be completed safely. She likes her job because she enjoys facing challenges. My personality makes me not liking regular jobs. Here in the operating room and the medical field, the pace is quicker. There are of course some challenges, but patients' feedback are her motivation to keep on going. There was a patient who told me that his biggest wish is that he can lie down and look up to the sky. 
after a few surgeries, he is able to lie down entirely and see the ceiling. That feeling is wonderful. She is very serious when it comes to her job and teaching. However, people call her sister Ajin because she treats her fellow nurses like a mother. She often makes snacks herself for us, and she takes care of her colleagues very nicely. On the day of the February 6 Hualien earthquake, Yao Li Jing gets off work at 5.30 p.m., but she returns to work immediately when the earthquake occurred at 11.50 p.m. She has already worked for the entire day shift, and then she came back to support the colleagues in the operating room till 8 a.m. in the morning. She has spent almost 24 hours that day contributing to the patients and co-workers in the hospital. Her passion for nursing has not decreased a bit after 20 years of being a nurse, and she has set up her goal to continue to guard the health of residents in eastern Taiwan with her profession. Chen Chen Jun from a single parent family is a graduate student of National Taipei University of Nursing and Health Sciences. In his third year of college, his family encountered some difficulties, so Tsuji Volunteer started to provide him with a scholarship. Now he takes every opportunity to give back to the society. Since I went to an elementary school, my mom has been working hard to earn money for the maintenance of my family. Actually, it was because my dad did not pay us alimony. When I was in the third year of college, my grandmother had a fall which injured her hips. Later, she underwent a surgery and then she started to do rehabilitation. That time, I also injured my foot when I played a school game. I also had a surgery, so my mom had to care for my grandmother and I at the same time. My heart goes out for her. I often said that it's fortunate for her mother to have her by her side. I'm wondering if her mother does not have her by her side, what will she be like? So I feel very thankful to her. She is her mother, but she is also my sister. I am deeply moved by her dedication to her mom. I thank her and I feel very grateful. I think that I have formed a tight bond with my mom. If we only have one opportunity, and if we don't fulfill our duty during our lifetime, we will feel regretful for not doing it. It was because of Tsuji Nusha's scholarship program that I started to come into contact with him. In the beginning, I was wondering whether we could help reduce his mother's financial burden through Tsuji's assistance, but his mother completely refused our help. She wanted to rely on herself despite her difficulties in life. After I came into contact with his family, I thought the only thing I could do was to care more for her child. I think I can now care for the underprivileged population just like what Zuji volunteers do. I have turned from the role of a care recipient into a giver who is able to help other less fortunate people. This is a positive impact to my life. I have realized that I am able to do so many things. In Malaysia, Dong Yongjie is a student at the Tsuji Kindergarten in Panang. In the past, she shed tears when eating vegetables because she did not like it. 
After joining the Veggie Planet Passport campaign, she was able to keep her promise to adapt a vegetarian diet and protect animals. Six-year-old Tiu Yongjie confessed to her preference, but to land on the Veggie Planet, she tried her best to overcome difficulties. I cry whenever I eat vegetables because I don't like to eat them. If I eat something that I don't like to eat, I always drink a lot of water and bite before I swallow. I want to adopt a vegetarian diet and make the animals happy. Actually, she doesn't like to eat meatless foods and vegetables, but after she participated in the Veggie Planet Passport campaign, she has been determined to achieve her goal. I think she is amazing. She has learned to try new things. Her perseverance in embracing vegetarianism and protecting animals has also inspired her family. After she took a mouthful of meat, she suddenly shed tears. I then asked her why she shed tears while eating. She told me the Veggie Plan and Passport campaign had already started, meaning that she had to adopt a vegetarian diet and stop eating meat. I ate meat by accident, but then I ate vegetables slowly, and I didn't eat meat. Keeping the promise is the starting point for her to protect animals. To promote love for Mother Earth, City Kindergarten children in Kadam, Malaysia, invited people to practice environmental protection in our daily lives. The way these children at the Tijin Kindergarten in Kadam, Malaysia, show their love to the earth is through little acts in daily life. Because the earth is sick now, I must protect it. How I can protect the earth is to save water and electricity. Don't buy toys and don't litter. Don't waste food and try to finish it all. Other than doing recycling themselves, they also bring their families alone. The Earth belongs to everyone, so we want to use this activity for the children to promote the concept of decreasing trash, eliminating the use of disposable plastic items. To love the Earth is to promote the Earth Day to more people. I do recycling also, but I never wash it so clean. Today, after I join Earth Day, I will wash the recyclables cleaner once I get back so it's convenient for the volunteers to recycle it. Now we know we've done it right in the past, but it's good to correct the mistake right away. I'll work on it. Through this activity, volunteers hope to remind everyone to have a compassionate heart and guard our land and put in real efforts to protect the beauty of our Mother Earth. Taiwan's only district hosted a simple Buddha Day ceremony in a recycling station in hopes to promote environmental protection while allowing the public to feel the inner peace through the event. We'll leave you with these images and thank you for joining us.